Hello, friends. How are you today? I hope good. Today is video three of my How to Study Your Bible video series. And we're going to talk about verse mapping or what I just call verse studies. And I am, if you'll notice, I have a different background. I'm puppy sitting this week. So I'll be doing videos from my daughter's house. So we're just going to uh, be using a checklist that I have made up. And then I also have forms, but you can just use plain old paper and pencil. And then I also have the digital versions available for you. But we're just going to look at one verse, break it down a little bit using very simple techniques. Uh, you can use a dictionary or you can just Google. I go to Google and I say define and the word and just look it up. So, but we're going to go through all of that and I'm going to move my camera around and we'll get started. I'll be right back. All right, I think I'm ready. This is an example of the verse map form. And this one has a little ink smear from the printer, so please ignore that. But this is the blank form that you can use to do the verse map. And so I went ahead and filled it out so you don't have to sit and watch me do all that writing. And we're just going to do this. So first, the instructions. Here's the verse map checklist. And it always says to pray first. And then it says, write out the complete verse into the verse box, including the reference. So this is the verse box right here. And I have written the verse out. Let me flip this over so that will be. Uh, I've written this verse out. And it is 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. And I think this is the King James Version. I usually put that on there. KGV. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. So then the next instruction is, we want to see what the verse says in a different translation. So you can just, if you have another Bible, a different translation, you can just pull one out but it's kind of good to try to get one that's as close to the original as possible. And what I like to use is the Young Living Translation. And here is a website where you can type that in and pull it up. Um, it's from hundreds of years ago. And it's kind of like the King James, but it is one of the closest translations to the original in English anyway. So you can use that, or I can't remember what I used. I used something, let me see, I wrote it down, I think. Yeah, I used the Apostolic Bible Polyglot as a English and Greek uh, Bible, and I used that one. But you can use whatever you want, or you can go to the Young Living Translation. So, what I want you to do is then go in and write out the verse in a different translation. And this is what my different translation says. Test yourselves if ye are in the belief. Try yourselves. Or do you not recognize that Jesus Christ is in you? Except you be rejected. Okay, so we've got the verse down in two different translations. The next instruction says... Choose two to six words that you would like to define better or that you think might be key to a better understanding of this verse. List the words in the words to define box. We will define them after we look at the context. So next is the words to define box. And that's a pretty good sized little box. And I chose six words that I wanted to define. And so what I did, I went up here and I just underlined the six words, I mean, actually, I chose five. I underlined the five words that I thought might help me better understand the verse. And so those are examine, prove, faith, accept, and reprobate. And then what I did is I pulled up the, I also wrote down the Greek word. 
for that word because we're in the New Testament, so it's in Greek, not Hebrew. And so I wrote down the Greek word. So then what you can do next is just use a dictionary. Um, pull it up. Now, first, I'm skipping ahead. Before you define those, before you go into the dictionary, you've written them down. But what I want you to do now is to look at the context. So the next instruction says, now we will look at the context of the verse by reading the verses above and below it. You might even need to read the whole chapter. We want to be familiar with what's going on around this passage so we can make a better judgment about what it means. Put a short explanation in the context box. And here's why we want to know the context before we look up the definitions. Because when you go in a dictionary and you look at the definitions for a word, there's going to be more than one. And it's going to be hard to choose which one is right unless you kind of know what's going on around the verse that you're talking about. What's going on in the verse, what's going on around it. You want to make the best choice because you want it to make sense. So I looked at the verses before and after to see kind of what was going on with this verse. And it will help us understand the verse anyway. So here's what I wrote down on what I thought the context was. I put in chapter 11, he warns them against false prophets. He's concerned they are drifting away. And after this verse, he expresses concern about them doing what is right. And then in chapter 12, he, he mentions some of them are doing impurities, fornication, debauchery. So they're really living it up. They're not acting like believers. So that's what's going on. So that might help us choose the right definitions. So I looked up the word examine, and there were a couple of uh, things that I thought fit properly. And here's what I chose to learn the true character of. So that fits in with our, our passage easily. Investigate thoroughly. The next word was prove. The definition I came up with was to show something as genuine, to demonstrate with evidence. So if you prove something, you're going to show that what you are saying is true. The next is faith. It could be a strong belief in God. And then the next one I found was complete trust and confidence. And actually, the second one is more of the Hebrew concept behind the word faith. It doesn't mean just to believe in God. It means to completely trust and have confidence in him. The next word was accept. And that meant like unless or if not. The next word was reprobate, and that means unapproved, rejected, morally worthless. So let's see what the next instruction is. Okay, it said, now look up each word in the dictionary. We did all of that. Um, it says, as you know, there will be several definitions available. Choose the one that best fits the context the best you can and write out a short summary of the definition next to each word. Now, we're going to paraphrase the verse, rewrite it in our own words using the definitions that we just got from the dictionary. And hopefully this is gonna give us a little better understanding. So, looking at the context, understanding what was going on, looking at the words that I chose and the definition of them, I rewrote the verse in my own words. And here is what I came up with. This is what I think Paul was saying to the Corinthians in this verse. Thoroughly investigate your life. Do you completely trust God? Demonstrate with evidence that you do. Don't you know that Jesus lives in you? Unless, of course, you have been rejected and unapproved. And I put, it could possibly be saying for lack of evidence because he says to 
prove yourselves. Show the evidence that you are really trusting and living for God. So I thought that was really, really good. Um, let me read the two side by side. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. Thoroughly investigate your life. Do you completely trust in God? Demonstrate with evidence that you do. Don't you know that Jesus lives in you? Unless, of course, you have been rejected and unapproved for lack of evidence. So that gave me a little bit better understanding of what the verse means, what Paul is talking about. And then there's a section where you can put your thoughts and what you think. And so this is my entry there. Paul is seeing some of them drifting into sin, and he's trying to get them to be honest about the state of their spiritual condition. He's warning them that if there is no evidence in their life of their life in Christ, they may be rejected. So that is basically what you do to summarize up a ver to uh, map out a verse, to study it, break it down a little bit. See if you can get a little better understanding of it. There's no right or wrong. It's just to help you look at the verse and kind of dig in a little bit and come up with what you think it's talking about. So that's the finish of that. Um, the next one is going to be topical studies, where we're going to take a topic, and I haven't decided which one to do yet. But we can take like uh, faith or anxiety or, or something like that. And I'm going to show you how to um, do a little research on what the Bible says about that topic and how to find verses and how to just study it in order to build up your faith for that subject. Or let's say you're, you're having um, problems with worry or depression and it's good to know what the Bible says about that. It's good to know what God's promises say about that. So the next video will be a topical study. So I look forward to seeing you then. And I hope you're getting some benefit from these. I love you all. Thank you.